Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and it's time for the weekly ranking show where we go through all the ATP and WTA rankings for the week. We've had some big changes. This week has been a massive week with the Canadian Open just finishing only a couple of hours ago. And of course, Cincinnati coming up next week, another big tournament for the ATP WTA. US Open around the corner. Let's go have a look at the results from the Canadian Open last week. So only the two events last week on the ATP and the WTA. In Toronto, we had the women's event with Simona Halep beating Haddad Meyer 6-3, 2-6, 6-3 in a very exciting final. And both players got a boost in the rankings for their wins. And over in Montreal, we had the men's event for the Canadian Open with Karina Busta beating Hubi Hercatch 3-6, 6-3, 6-3 in a very unlikely final because we did have a lot of good players last week. And Busta got a massive boost in the rankings after winning his first Masters 1000 event. So very interesting results last week. And with a lot of upsets happening, the rankings were affected. Okay, let's start with the W. WTA rankings for this week and a lot of changes to the top 10. But Iga Sviantec, she stays on top despite having a poor week last week. She'll be looking to rebound next week. Conservate stays at number two for now, but we had a little bit of a change in that top five with Bedosa going down one spot to number four and Zachary going up one spot to number three with Ons Jabeur staying at number five. Now those four players in particular from two to five, there's only 500 points between them in the rankings. So next week, Cincinnati is going to be crucial for all those ladies. But the big changes for this week have come down the bottom half of the top 10 with Simona Halep going up nine spots back into the top 10 at number six after winning in Toronto. She pushes down a lot of players, including Sabalenka who goes down to number seven. Pagula goes down to number eight. Muguruza down to number 9, and Kazakina down to number 10. Emma Raducanu completely drops out of the top 10 after a great week from Simona Halep. And again, just like the top 5, between 6 and 13 in the rankings, there's only 500 points between the bunch of them. So again, next week in Cincinnati is going to be so crucial. Having a look at the race to the final now, and again, more changes happening, but Triontek's still the only player to qualify for the finals, staying at number 1. Jabur stays at number 2, but Kazakina, she drops down 3 spots number six with Pagula jumping up two spots to number three after a great week in Toronto making the semi-finals. Coco Golf goes down to number five but Simona Halep with 900 points to her name she jumps up into the top four nine spots higher than last week with the win in Toronto so a lot of changes up there in that part of the rankings and the race to the finals. Coming in number seven is Maria Sacri she stays there. Pella but also got bumped down two spots to number eight after both Pagula and Halep doing so well. Bencic stays at number nine and Kudamatova gets bumped down to number 10 with Daniel Collins dropping out of the top 10 completely so again that mainly thanks to Halep and of course Pagula having a good week too. They rise up the rankings pushing a lot of players down. We didn't have a great week. Having a the players that have gone up in the rankings outside the top 10. No surprise, Haddad Mayer. Very, very good week last week, and she gets a massive boost in the rankings. Eight spots higher than last week to a career high number 16 in the world. And Zheng also having a really good last week. 10 spots higher than last week, up to number 41 in the world, which is a career high for her, and she's on the brink of being seeded at the US Open. Definitely one to watch for the future. Players that have gone down in the rankings, the two players that got to the final last year. Pliskova and Georgie, they both made the final of this event last year. Pliskova has gone down three spots to number 17, so she did regain a lot of points. But Georgie, who won the event last year, couldn't replicate that, and she's dropped down 36 spots to number 65 in the world. So it was a tough week for Georgie to try and defend that massive title. And Pliskova did a good job of making the semi-final, so she didn't get push down as far, but, but these two ladies will look to rebound next week in Cincinnati. Going over the ATP rankings now, and not too many changes on the men's side, despite all the madness that happened. With Daniel Medvedev staying at number one just for this week. We'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks. Alexander Zverev is at number two with Rafa Nadal at number three. Alcarez is still at number four. But Stevanos Tsitsipas, he's gone down two spots to number seven. Kasper Ruud going up two spots to number five after Ruud made the semifinals. And Tsitsipas lost points from last year when he made a good run in Canada. So those two swap positions with Djokovic staying at number six right in the middle there. But of course... Djokovic at the US Open in a few weeks. If he doesn't play, he'll lose a lot of points there. Rublev still stays at number eight, with Ogier Eliassime staying at nine, and Hubi Hercatch staying at number 10. But remember, this week, Rafa's back, and also a lot of the players in the top 10 lost this week. Some big upsets with Medvedev and Alcaraz, Sidzi Pass, Rublev. They'll be looking to rebound. Having a look at the ATP race to the finals now, and not too many changes with Rafa still at number one, and he could qualify for the ATP finals next week. Officially, if he gains a couple of hundred points, 
Alcaraz stays at number two, with Tsitsipas at number three, Rude still at number four, Medvedev at five, Zverev stays at six, but Andre Rublev, he's dropped down to number eight, making way for Oje Aliassim, who made a quarterfinal last week in Canada. Rublev had a pretty bad upset in the first couple of rounds. And Hubi Hercatch, he comes in at number nine, pushing down Taylor Fritz to number 10, and Novak Djokovic falls out of the top 10 completely, due to not playing. So Hercatch had a really, really good week and got rewarded in the rankings with a lot of points. But again, Cincinnati, expect more changes because it's very, very close between all of those players in the top 10 with Rafa being the exception, having won a couple of slams. Having a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week on the ATP and Carino Busta. He has gone up nine spots to number 14 in the world after the biggest trophy of his life winning in Canada. And Nick Kyrgios, he is now going to be seated at this stage at the US Open. He's number 28 in the world, nine spots higher than last week after a quarterfinal run. So as long as he stays in the top 30 for another week, Kyrgios will be seated, which means he doesn't have to play any of the big boys in the first couple of rounds. Players that went down in the rankings this week outside the top 10, we had Riley Opelka, last year's finalist from Canada. He drops down nine spots to number 26. And John Isner, he's dropped down 17 spots to number 50. So the two tallest players in the top 100, both losing a lot of points this week, dropping down in the rankings because of it. So there you have it. Those are the rankings for the week. And I told you last week it was going to be crazy. And we had some crazy results. A lot of upsets. A lot of players you know, on the brink of doing something great in the rankings, maybe career high rankings on the line. They just couldn't make the results happen this week. But we have another big event next week. Cincinnati, it's worth a thousand points. Going to be a lot on the line. And again, like I said, about 500 points on the women's side will decide a lot of those rankings. So let me know down in the comments below, what do you reckon? Do you think this is going to be the rankings for the US Open? Or do you think we're going to get a big change next week? A lot of players have to redeem themselves. And of course, there's a good, it might be a change at the top. Rafa Nadal could be world number one if Daniel Medvedev doesn't make the quarterfinals and Rafa wins Cincy. And Rafa will be number one going into the US Open if that is the case. So a lot on the line for a lot of players just ahead of the US Open.